Tonight, from U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, it's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Jackets and scarves downright cold outside on this November evening, but all good here inside as we welcome you to Minneapolis, Minnesota. Tonight, we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup between the New England Patriots and the Minnesota Vikings. Joseph now ready to get this one started and we are underway from Minneapolis on oh, the return Marcus Jones from the end zone and they'll get him down right around the 25 actually the 26 officially so a net gain of one there It didn't take long to see our first penalty of the game did it we always talk about everyone wanting to get into the game in a hurry the officials did as well Jones now on first down and caught by Henry. He gets it forward for four, maybe five, but the flags fly. And this one could be coming back. So apparently some grabbing there in the middle of the O-line. I've often wondered why that doesn't happen more often for guys that play center. Having to snap the ball and then trying to get your hands into the proper position, that's difficult to do. He got caught that time. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. And he'll be hit and dropped for a loss at the five-yard line. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Ball resting on their own five here as they come up to the line on second and long. They run again with Harris. And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. He's able to get four back on the run, but now they'll have to find something here on third and about 14. On any running play this call, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Hunter Henry brings it in and able to get this one out just shy of the 25 at the 24. Able to convert on third and 14, a terrific play call. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. Now a play fake here on first down. And 
and nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. Well, anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try and hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they were up to the challenge. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Throwing again. Jones, complete. Hunter Henry with the ground. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. Got a man open, that's Devontae Parker complete. And he will have a Patriots first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and 10 at the 45. Again, he'll drop to throw. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Eric Kendricks. And the Vikings are going to have great field position here as this is returned just shy of midfield. Offensively, a far from ideal start there with a pick on the opening drive. Yeah, not exactly what they were looking for. We know that. That's pretty obvious. The beauty, though, is it's happening early. If they don't panic, they don't compound this problem, they've got a long way to go and a chance to get back in it. The Vikings offense coming out for the first time and in his fifth season leading this crew, coming off his third career Pro Bowl nod, Kirk Cousins. And one nice thing you can always say about Kirk Cousins is that he's consistent, always puts up nice numbers each and every year. If there is a downside to his game, it's been the lack of playoff success. All in all, though, formidable starting quarterback at a time in the league where it's tough to find your franchise guy. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 49. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground, and he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. To throw on second and six, Cousins. He's got Smith here. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. They get five, and it will go ahead and move the chains. Well, Charles, it's early, but that's a key third down conversion. Remember, they forced the turnover on the opening drive. Now they're in a position where they look like they'll at least get three out of this. A great example of complimentary football if they're able to cash this in, isn't it, partner? Because defense does its job, takes it away, turns over the offense. They just pick up a nice first down there. Maybe it's time to think about taking a shot at the end zone because it looks like the field goal is almost assured. Play fake, Cousins. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. The safety blitz turns out to be a great call defensively as they sack him for a loss of nine. These strong safeties, some people may not realize it, it's really like an extra linebacker, right? It really is because they're hybrids. Half linebacker, half defensive back. 
The linebacker in him on that play emerged. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Cousins gives way to Cook. The four-yard pickup that gets him going forward, but still 15 yards left on third down. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks, and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Devin McCourty picks it off. And the Patriots are going to get the football here as he gets this up to the 38-yard line. So consecutive interceptions here early on in this one and maybe setting the tone, Charles, for a game where the defense really takes center stage. And don't you think that both offenses are really catching a bit from their coaching staff about avoiding these turnovers that we've seen early? I think both teams are trying to find an advantage. We know that. Can one of them break away and take control of this game? Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 38. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. So the completion good for seven there. And it'll be second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Second down and three. Harris running straight ahead. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. That one, a first down pickup of eight. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. First down, and they go back to Harris. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field when his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. The last run got six, now second and four. Looking to throw. Jones looking for Aguilar, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Eric Kendricks. And the Vikings are going to take possession as they've got it at the 42-yard line. Second straight drive now here, Charles, that have ended with an interception. And I just wonder, because I don't think it's going to rattle him necessarily, but I also wonder if it's going to unnerve him a little bit. Does it lead to another one, or does he find a way to pull it together and become sharp again? So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 42. 
Following the interception, Cousins. And this one complete to Smith. It'll go down as a gain of six. And that's going to bring up second down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Just shy of midfield. Cousins goes right back to Smith again. And they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. The start for them near flawless. Defense gets them a three and out. Two quick pass connections on offense. So that's how a team works together. Just what you described. Get them the ball, give them a little momentum, and they're capitalizing off of that. Thanks a lot, guys. Cousins on first down. It's caught, Smith. And he'll wind up getting this to the 32, a play that started at the 16, and that's how many yards they get. First down, fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. Used to be occasional, right, safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. From the two now, here's first and ten. Running the jet sweep, this is Thielen with it. And he'll take this inside the 30 to about the 29, maybe the 28-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. On second and seven, Cousins. And he wisely will throw that one away. But there's an incompletion, partner, and the struggles through the air continue because so far their lack of passing production has led to a lack of points. The 22 is the line to gain here on third down. To throw, Cousins. Open man is Thielen is complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots 17-yard line. The third down conversion is successful. Give him 12 yards that time. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot. So you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. From the red zone now, Cousins. Yeah, that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. They're putting together a drive here in the final minutes of the half, but the coverage has been tight all game long, and they certainly want to keep him off the scoreboard here. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Over the middle to Smith. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. Five yards, now it's third and five. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. break the huddle and come up on the ninth play of this drive, needing five yards on third down. Again, it's Cousins. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And the Vikings are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And that's understanding where the markers are, because it's not just running to them. 
because on the catch, you could actually be pushed back before the first down. He's getting past it and allowing that opportunity to drip back towards the first down line and still having picked it up. Really well run. Five yards from the end zone, first and goal. To throw is Cousins. And it's caught in the end zone for the Viking touchdown by Justin Jefferson. A five-yard touchdown catch. And the Vikings post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. That's why you've got your star out there. Throw the ball to him. They did. That's simply saying we don't care what coverage you put out there. He's so good. We're going there with the football anyway, and there's not a thing you can do about it. Inside the red zone, they go to him. He gets it done. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. He's got it, and the Vikings take a 7-0 lead. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was all capped off by Justin Jefferson's touchdown reception. Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Taken in at the three. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Now comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And it's been a miserable start for them offensively, obviously. Two drives, two interceptions. And this is where you have to know your quarterback and know how you actually have to reach him. Do you do it with a little bit of humor? Maybe you break the ice a little bit, like, hey, didn't we practice in that color jersey all week, <laughs> not the one that you're throwing it to? Or maybe you have to be stern with him. But whatever it's going to take to get the message, it has to be done. He's putting the game in jeopardy. Trying to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. And he finds Parker here, complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 10 yards there to start the drive, and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. From the 44, Jones. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. And they will set up shop at their own 41-yard line. I'm not sure that the wheels, Charles, are coming completely off, but they're shaking a little bit. That's three interceptions, and now interceptions here on back-to-back -back drives. And I think about what a Hall of Fame coach told me that he always told his teams, when a mistake happens, just move on to the next play. Let it go. Hard to do when you've thrown this many interceptions. That's exactly the attitude that has to be adopted. Good starting field position for the Vikings as they have it first and 10 at the 41-yard line. Throwing his Cousins. Goes down. It's a Patriot sack. Dietrich Wise running through and dropping him for the sack. Well, certainly going to be a lot tougher adding a touchdown to that lead now since they're facing second and 20 plus. Big time sack to start the drive and put the opponent way back. Let's see what kind of play call they come up with here.
Now they're in some hot water now. After that sack, it's second and 21. Throwing Cousins to Jefferson on the slam. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. Play of the half, Cousins lets it fly for Thielen. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jalen Mills, and he will be brought down on what will be the final play of this first half. So we've reached halftime here in Minnesota with the Vikings on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everyone, to our brand-new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. His guys have the lead as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. have to like their position they've got the lead they get this football as well as we are back and underway for the second half taking in at the three and a good effort on the return there gets him across the 30 up to the 33 now come the Vikings they'll have it first on offense as we begin the third and they got the lead CD what do you think the message was at halftime I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation to pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. Starting the third quarter with Cook. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, you hate that defensively. They had it pretty well corralled, but the face mask, that obviously changes things. Yeah, it's a bit frustrating because you feel like you did everything right. You had him stop, but the hand gets up just a little too high, and the natural inclination is to hold on, and that's going to get called every time. So a big penalty there on the face mask leads to first and ten. Cousins now from the 50. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete, but the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. Well, there were about 70,000 that were quickly calling for the head flag. It comes out there for pass interference. And what do you think, partner? A little sarcasm in that cheering from this crowd here tonight. What they're hoping now is to build a little momentum off of it and give them a more genuine reason to cheer down the road. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and 10. They'll try the middle with Cook. Big Christian Barmore was there on the tackle. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right, he's pretty much been completely neutralized. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Exactly. 
They run it again with Cook. And he's going to take this down close to the first as he's brought down at the Patriots' 15-yard line. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. On third and one, here's Cousins. Got an open man finding Jefferson. Touchdown, Vikings! Kirk Cousins on the connection to Justin Jefferson. And the Vikings have taken a two-touchdown lead now. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors. But that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Joseph now to have the PAT. And it's good to make it 14-0. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it was all capped off by Justin Jefferson's touchdown reception. Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Taken in at the three. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. So here are the Patriots now. They get ready for their first possession of half number two. They make their second half debut here, and things are looking a little bit tougher now. You give up the points there, Charles, that touchdown drive on the other side. So now it's a two-score game here. Got to be careful. They certainly do, and I'm just wondering at halftime if those guys just looked into each other's eyes and realized what they've got to get done and come out a little bit more charged up because if they don't get some kind of points here, that next drive, that could make this a three-possession game. Now Jones. And right side, Henry's got it. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he could break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. On second down, this is Harris. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Throwing on second and eight, Jones. And this one almost intercepted. Far too loose with the football. Nearly a fourth pick of the ball game. 
trying to decipher what's going on out there because I don't know if he's just getting bad reads. I don't know if the defense is confusing him. I don't know if he just has, you know, bad info and intel before he snaps the ball, but he's made some pretty bad decisions with the football lately. He has several bad decisions on the interceptions he's thrown, and frankly, that should have been another pick right there. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. A gain of eight there on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. I thought maybe when he caught it, he'd have a good chance of getting that first down. But that's a nice job of holding him up and preventing him from getting to the sticks. The Patriots send out their punter. As he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. And out now come the Vikings. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Look at repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. On first and 10, Cousins complete. Jefferson the target. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Cook up the gut. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Now Cousins. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. First target, first catch, and a first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Cousins now to throw on first down. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Third quarter on a Monday night with a second and ten coming up. From the gun, it's a give to Cook, and he'll take it across the 50 and into New England territory. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. On third down, Cousins. Throw caught there by Osborne. And he won't quite make it. He needed six, he got about five. Fourth down. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports.
Cousins to throw for it on four. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Vikings unable to convert here on fourth. And the Patriots' defense is going to take over on downs. And I am not sure, partner, there what the mindset was to go for it. I don't know. And some teachers feel that possession is the key to everything. They just want to have the football in their hands. No matter how it goes to the other team, they just don't trust doing that. So they say, let's uh, go for it and try and finish it ourselves. Very good starting position for the Patriot offense as they come up first and 10 at their own 42. They'll start on the ground with Harris. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. Jones and that is incomplete he couldn't hold on through the contact brings up second down he did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived and I've got to tell you you can often miss time that play because of the angles of approach when you're going to get him sometimes you panic as well and think I've got to be there right now instead in this case timed it perfectly and knocked it free on second and ten Jones the connection here with Nelson Aguilar. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. The offense on third down tonight, they've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and four. Back to throw. Jones. Oh, now he's stripped. He lost the football. And the Vikings pick up the football. And his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. Okay, this isn't one where you want to take the game tape and hold it up as an example, do you? I mean, you talk about frustrating all the way through. And that last error, I think that crystallizes it, doesn't it? Absolutely. That's been representative of their entire game still being shut out. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 right at the 30. He'll start by handing it off to Dalvin Cook. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. And a pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. Lawrence Guy just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. Well, partner, I would say just avoid play action, but that's not just been the problem. This defense, they've been getting pressure on all types of pass plays and really piling up the sacks in this contest. So now after the sack, Cousins and the Vikings come up here third and long. They'll set up to throw. He'll find Thielen work in the middle. And he'll be brought down at the 34, well short of the first down marker. So the completion results there in nine yards. 
And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Brandon, a good idea there on third down. Run a little clear out and hope you can get your receiver the ball coming across the formation. Nice design, but well played defensively, and they stop him well short. Now here's Ryan right now. Always a good sign when your first punt comes in the fourth quarter. That'll be a 44-yard boot, just a yard on the return as he's covered up quickly. And the Patriots take over. New England's offense set to go. And you're still in this game. I mean, yeah, you haven't scored. Offense obviously has struggled, but you're only two scores down, so all hope not lost. Not at all, because we're talking about the NFL, and teams can score fast in this league. Quick strikes, you're right back in it. You're exactly right, keeping hope alive. Jones and the Pats now with a first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. Throwing to start the drive. Jones complete. It's Henry. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it's second down. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical. And you figure may only get one more shot after this. So a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. Looking to throw again on second down. Jones. This complete left side to Aguilar. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. That goes as a gain of 11 and a Patriot first down. Nice game there, partner, but you and I both know that won't do anything for the final score. They're not going to win this one. Right now, they're playing for pride and fantasy points. <laughs> and just to erase that goose egg, nobody wants to be shut out. Now Jones on first and 10. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. The sack coming from big Dalvin Tomlinson. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Patriots with the football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Now they're in some hot water now after that sack. It's second and 21. Looking to throw. Jones. Smith catches left side. And he'll be upended here after a pickup of three, getting it out to the 25. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. Jones. He's got it complete to Aguilar. He'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Third and 19, no problem as they're able to convert. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores, want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. Jones. And this complete to Henry over the middle. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. Now the Patriots moving quickly, hustling up to the line. Here's Jones. Finding Harris over the middle. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 28. 
A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. Finding Harris on back-to-back -back plays. And he's going to be taken down, but there's a penalty flag in the backfield. Is this a hold, or did they rough the quarterback? But Charles, they're trying to protect this lead late. Those are the types of mistakes they could afford to go without. About the last thing you want to give them is help in completing a comeback, which is exactly what that penalty does. So now a fresh set of downs, first and 10 after roughing the passer. To throw is Jones. He'll get this underneath to Stevenson. Down to the six-yard line on a pickup of six as he gets halfway to the goal line. Now the Patriots will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Second and four, they could still get a first down without scoring. Now Jones, and that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one, closed quickly, and helped force the incompletion. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Again, he'll drop to throw. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed. But if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right. And if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Doesn't you got, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> And now remember, all touchdowns are reviewed. And in a tight game like this, they're going to take a good long look at it. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds. And obviously, a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Nick Folk for the point after. And that one makes it 14-7. to A 10-play drive that time. And Devontae Parker able to finish it off with a touchdown reception. Five seconds to go. A must recover if they're going to have any chance. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a camper on this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it they do actually recover the ball which is what we saw here I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number kind of like when the coaches tell us well when you score on special teams 93 percent <laughs> of the time you win the game I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical Thank you. 
Victory formation time for the Vikings as they'll take a knee here. The Patriots will take their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. Cousins just going to take this one down to a knee and end it. I don't know about you, partner, but watching them take the knee there and finish this one off, I feel like I'm going to be sore tomorrow. This was one bruising affair. Low scoring, but my kind of football. Not a work of art, but maybe in your world, a little bit of a work of art. You like the defensive side. I thought it was pretty. I can't help myself. <laughs> I thought it was pretty. And it ends in a kneel down as the clock rolls down to zeros. So the final seconds have ticked away in this Minnesota victory. And it was their defense that really paved the way to this victory as they allowed the one touchdown. And that was all she wrote. Almost want to do the defense chant right now, right? Defense with a couple of claps in there. But no one wants to hear that from me. Let's just talk about how they got it done, though. When you take care of every aspect of the game, shut down the run, control the airways, right? Make sure the quarterback is harassed. This type of performance you get. They can't fashion together any offense, no consistency, and they just took control. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. It's a win for the Vikings as we say so long from Minneapolis.